Welcome out, ladies and gentlemen, to this RGL.GG semi-final matchup tonight. In the second to last match of the season, these two teams will battle it out to earn their spot in the grand finals and a chance at $1,200. Ascent, despite having an incredibly slow start to the season, has started to rise up just at the right time and actually upset Faint Gaming in the quarterfinal match. Velocity Esports has looked incredibly strong all season, having only lost one game all season. Will Mela's flex play help push them forward to the next level? Or will the sniping of Andrew on Velocity be able to shut everybody down? Find out tonight who will move forward to the Grand Finals, who will be going home in this best of three matchup. I am Sigafu, joined out here with Nysel behind the scenes and Box Day to my side. How are you doing out here, Box Day? Oh, I'm doing great, you know. It's it's semifinals for, for RGL. We got two awesome teams going at it, and I'm just happy to be your plus one. I <laughs> anytime you're next to me, Vox, I, I'm always happy. We we've had you many times here throughout the playoffs, and, and hopefully this will be another good one as we can uh, just jump straight away into pick bands because these guys, they're going at it. They're going at it hot as uh, we get started up here. And this is going to be Upward is going to be our first match of the night. The first map, I should say. As uh, Ascent going, again, they, they've been going after the Heavy a lot. Uh, in last week, they're doing it again this week with, fur, with two of their first bands taking down the Tomslav as well as the Natasha. And Velocity Esports traditionally does not run an Engineer, while Ascent does because they have Scratchy on the team. And so you can see them going hard after the Engineer out here. So you can see both teams having a strategy of what classes they want to kind of fight against. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely see that. I mean, Scratchy Engineer for Ascent is uh, one of the best in uh, in Highlander. So the fact that they're focusing him, take down that short circuit, take down that Wrangler, and he's going to hopefully be less effective. I wouldn't be surprised if we see them maybe go for Gunslinger next. But you see Ascent continues uh, to take down the heavy. Fist to Steel are going to go, which is a smart pick for Upward. Yeah, you know, when it comes to this map, you put a 450 HP, you know, even after the nerf to them, they're still very usable, you know, to put the heavy onto, onto the card. Uh, particularly for the final point push, this was something that Kresnik was so annoyingly good at. Where he would get, you know, the Fist of Steel heavy. He would just run onto the card and, like, you could do nothing to stop him. Um, and I'm kind of curious to see if Velocity will go all the way out. Uh, you know, even go so far. I think the Rescue Ranger is actually exactly what I was going to say. And they go just for that. They just literally, okay, this is, we're going to make Engineer very hard to be played. The Engineer is still viable to be used. But it's going to be much harder to do anything really effective with it. Uh, mini sentries will still be viable. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Scratchy do that. Uh, the big earner, though, being saved, as I believe... I, I have to check my roster, but I believe Vipa will be playing for Velocity Esports. So having that spy main on there, helping them out. As the gunboats goes down... And, or, I'm sorry, should, um, the gunboats get saved uh, by Ascent. Patty doing absolute work last week. Yeah, and I'm interested to see what Ascent choose to do on this band. Do they continue going after the Heavy? I say no. I think you want to try to diversify a little bit, maybe hone in on some of the strengths, uh, other strengths for Velocity, and see if, if maybe you can um, cut them down just a bit. I mean, Andrew, of course, very solid sniper, uh, one of the best there is. Uh, Kritzkrieg is actually going to get banned by Velocity first, and... I, I was kind of hoping that they would go for Gunslinger and we'd just see them across the board. Just NG, 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 <laughs> Just NG, now NG. stop NG, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that'd be a good strategy. I think, you know, three bands is about the most you want to put at a class, especially after the, the balances from the Pyro update. But taking on the Kritzkrieg, we did see Nursey use the Kritzkrieg effectively last week uh, against uh, the Faint Gaming. I mean, they, ultimately, they did not win on this map against Faint Gaming. Faint Gaming was able to take it to a 2-0, but they definitely had some surprise plays. But you know what? Who knows? You know what? Uh, Box Day, I think they're just going to go 5. They're just going to go every heavy weapon <laughs> they possibly can find. That's what they're going to take down. I think uh, Carl Carl is a uh, Dragon's Fury getting fan, and that's uh, sorry, that that's an interesting one. I, I've seen two different uh, styles. People say they hate it. Uh, I can't believe it, it's so overpowered, and then the other half are like, eh, it's just kind of a, uh, a novelty weapon, you know, it's easy to play around, so it's interesting, Velocity go for the ban on it, they don't want to deal with it at all, which is smart. And then this sandwich, just just a slap in the face of Carl for Velocity, uh, one of the strongest heavies in the past, uh, God knows how long in TF2, and they just really want to make his day hard. 
I love it. I kind of, I kind of love it. It's like, it's almost like just like, as you said, kind of a slap in the face, a little bit of like trolling, a little bit of memory, you know, just like, let's just go after the heavy. Let's just make his life miserable. You know, the best part is, is I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see like, you know how Kresnik, he kind of invented the strat of running the hula, or uh, the brass beast on stairs. Right. You know, maybe yeah. we'll, I, I'm assuming Carl, Carl will do that. Be like, okay, you banned all these, but you did not ban my bass, brass beast. But the thing is, is even without that, I mean, obviously not having the sandwich, that's a big deal not being able to get your medic those heals but uh what's the new one the banana the second banana, yeah, the banana. That's, still, that's still pretty decent like that's a viable thing you add though i mean the heavy is still incredibly viable with the mini mini gun i mean obviously having the the, uh, the thomas love is very nice because it allows you to have that silence with that bonus um of how it works now but yeah I, i'm Overall, I, I kind of I, I like these picks the dragon's fury also that band might be because mela likes to use the dragon's fury yeah, that that would make sense, and you know, I the one other thing too that you could use, I I can't remember if it ended up getting fixed, but the Delocus bar. So I I mean that's another option. I can't remember. I remember there was a glitch um, when the update first came out, and if if that's been fixed, you know, the Delocus bar may be another option for for Carl to use on heavy. But yeah, it's. I really, it is a really interesting set of picks and bands. Make sure that Big Earner stays and the gunboats as well. Um, the gunboats being a key one, I think they could have gotten away with maybe not not saving it, right? I think it would have made it through and then you could have grabbed something else that you're worried about. But it's it's kind of like rolling the dice. You never know what the enemy team is going to do. So you want to just make sure something that you really, really like stays in. Yeah, so we'll see kind of uh, what these teams come out with and, and how the, ultimately they want to play. It looks like we're going to see Velocity choosing to choo uh, start on defense, which is uh, the Highlander strat typically. You know, you want to start out. Uh, but the thing is, is I've actually kind of been more and more. I mean, we've seen a lot of Sixes team like to start on offense because, you know, with Prolander, it's so fast-paced. And fast times allow your team to be able to set the pace, make the enemy team have to sweat, you know? Because if you get a really good time, you know, it's in some ways it's better. It's it's better to go on offense first because if you get a seven minute time, six minute time, you know, you make it so that the other other team does not have a mistake. Now it does incentivize the other team also to you know have to they know how much time they're working against and and when they need to make big plays. But I I don't know. I think it's kind of a double edged sword, and we've seen a lot of teams who start on offense having success with it. Um, you know. But uh, I'm, I'm I'm very curious. I'm very curious to see. Um, you know, as it looks like. We're just waiting for a couple more uh, to get in here. Um, but yeah, we can go over rosters here real quick for tonight. If you want to uh, pull those up, uh, Box Day? Yeah. Um, so for Velocity, we're going to be seeing Jarrett, uh, a, a legend in his own right from older old school Highlander days on K&D. Carl, Andrew, Marmalou, Skis, Vipa, and Shamu. Yeah, and over for the Ascent side, uh, they've had a couple of mix-ups recently. They've kind of messed around with their roster all season long. Uh, but mo most recently, they picked up Space Ghost Coffee, who's done really solid job on Sniper Scratchy as well, taking on the engineer role, replacing Uncle Dane. Uh, looks like they're going to have Badonski out on Demo Man tonight with Yamsan Scout, who's been an absolute beast. Uh, and looks like, and then uh, trying to find their last couple of players here, their uh, Ilias up. But I'm looking to be their standard roster. As I pull that up, it's going to be Mela as well as Patty uh, finishing it off for them. And Patty's been fantastic. It's been really interesting watching Patty because he just plays Soldier like no other Soldier that I see. He plays very heal heavy and then he just makes bombs in. He kind of like, I guess, similar to like a, a, how a Roamer would play. You know, get me up to that 300 HP and then I'm just going to go make a play onto the enemy team. Now, you have to be careful with that. Because this is the thing that Ascent has struggled with, is understanding that when you play on defense, that is different than playing on offense. It's different than playing 5 CP. You know, it, it's the thing that a lot of Sixes players struggle with, is understanding how to play around an objective and how to play around spawn timers. They kind of get that from Koth. You know, it's like you don't want to die when you control the point. But it's even more apparent when it comes to defense. Like, you, you have much less incentive to make plays when it comes to being on defense with, when it comes to upward. Right, yeah, especially we, we talk about it uh, a lot, but transitions for, for payload are, are so important. So 
you know, you might, if, if the enemy team is swarming into first, you might want to back up a little early. Yeah, you might not hold it for that extra 10, 15 seconds, but that could save you minutes of time uh, to get over to the next point because that means your engineer can get set up, your medic can escape safely. Uh, so if you if you fail those transitions and you lose even, let's say, two, three players uh, on the way back up, the other team, the pushing team, can just get wildly aggressive, choke you off towards your spawn, and now you've lost two points for the price of one. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's really it is. Like, that's the thing that you really have to be careful about is those transitions getting backed up. In particular, um, you want to make sure that you, you, you basically, you want to make sure you get everybody out early. Because if you let... It, it's one of these problems that happens in a lot of different games is that if you try to take a fight halfway there, you're ultimately giving up multiple points. It's better to give up a point completely and defend another point completely. Like if you're if you have half your team up and they're pushing hard on seconds, it's better to give up second and just do a full defense on third than it is to do a half dis defense on second because you're going to do a half defense on third and you're just going to get rolled over and over and over again uh, until you can kind of get set up. And, and the other thing too is you you always want to make sure that you have time on the objective. And it's the same thing with the offense is making sure that you have consistent time pushing it because that's something that can hurt teams a lot if they don't focus the offense as well. Right, yeah. And I, I think eyes are going to be on ascent for that. For Velocity, I do really trust uh, how they're going to play a map like Upward. I mean, Carl just fresh off of another uh, victory in Platinum this season. He, he's definitely got one of the best strategic minds for Highlander. And then, as I mentioned before, Jarrett, a uh, legend in his own right from from back in the day. I mean, obviously, he still plays, but more so in the, in the Highlander sense. I mean, these are players that are so well-versed in Highlander that it's, it's really hard to come up against them on a map like Upward that has to feel like home. But for a set, I mean, you mentioned it before, Space Ghost has come in and done really well for them, and so is Scratchy. And I don't want to leave out Nursey, but those are all players that play a lot of Highlander as well. So, you know, maybe that's a, an extra element to their team that they've added is just more players that uh, will be able to, to help the Sixes players make those calls on, on how to play a map like this. And just want to let you know, they are live in real time. So in less than 90 seconds, we'll get started on this first map of this best of three match in the semi-final matchup of Velocity Esports versus Ascent. And we can talk a little bit about these teams. Ascent has had a particularly wishy-washy season. They've done very well, obviously, in their ESCA inside of sixes. But inside of Prolander, they've seemed to struggle all seasons. They actually only won one game. Uh, actually, two games. They barely won their final one. Uh, but the biggest difference seems to be is that they kind of finally figured out, like, we need to have a person who can play sniper. We can't just put someone who's casually playing sniper. We really need someone who has that. And they started out with course. They switched over to Space Ghost Coffee. And uh, it looks like we had a little bit of a glitch there. Or no? It looks like a possible ready up. We'll see if they're going to get properly readied up here. But Space Ghost Coffee, just real quick. Uh, has been doing really fantastically for his team of Ascent uh, this last week as we're properly readied up here. It's going to be Velocity Esports starting out on red in uh, Space Ghost. That's going to be the Ascent team starting out on blue. And just really quickly, for anybody who's not familiar with competitive TF2, not familiar with Payload and how it works competitively, the way that it'll work is Ascent on blue will set a time on offense. So they'll get, you know, one, two, three, or four, all four points. And whatever they get with that, they'll set a time. And basically, then Velocity will then switch teams. They'll start on offense, and they have to beat that time. So either they have to beat the number of points, or they have to be faster than the other team. So if Velocity puts up a 10-minute time, then... then I'm sorry, if Ascent puts up a 10-minute time, then all Velocity do has, is have to put up under 10 minutes. So 9.59, they win the, the first round. So we can get started out here, and we can see Viper. They're actually not running a spy on defense. Which I think kind of makes sense because the teleporter is important. So I guess they, they gimp the engineer and then run one themselves, which I, I think is kind of interesting. Yeah, I, I feel like they, there's got to be something that they spoke about. Like, okay, this is our focus, but Viper, we're still going to use you for points one, you know, one and three or something like that. But we'll have to see what Velocity chooses to do as the gate open. I always like to look at the sniper be sniper battle. Andrew... Uh, uh, Andrew going to be on Sniper for Velocity, looking for Space Ghost. And right now, no no sack wave coming out for Ascent just yet. They don't want to suicide themselves in, but the gun's going to go down. Viper's gun is already down, and that might already be a nice opening for Ascent to push in. 
And Scratchy is actually on Spice. You can see it's already some class switching going on here. As he's in onto the medic, he's trying to get the backstab, but does get the force off on to Skis. Went down to 45 HP. Does a nice job there. Combination with the soldier getting the force off on Skis. That means that Nursey now has 100% Uber, and all they have to do is just push straight into the enemy team, and they'll overtake him. Uh, Shamu is on that left-hand side. Trying to work his way in. He's very aggressive for Velocity. Has to be careful not to get caught in here. Ultimately, will get back out. But the offense, though they had players die, the respawns are so fast, they're already back up. And honestly, Ascent just needs to push out here. Yeah, it looks like they are doing that. Nursey is pushing out. They, of course, need to be careful of Andrew, who's still uh, who's still sniping around. But they haven't used the Uber just yet. Nursey is going to use now. Patty's jumping in, but... Uh, Badonski is nowhere to be found on that Uber. It looks like there was some confusion and he never pushed in when uh, Nursey flashed on him. And that's going to be kind of a problem for them. They really should have taken this point easily. And now they've lost Mela and they're backing up as the rest of Velocity gets aggressive. Space Ghost goes down. Nursey's back in spawn and that's going to be a failed push for Ascent here. Wow, that was really abysmal. I mean, it's pushing in with 100% Uber charge, particularly on the first point, should be incredibly easy. You take high ground, you maintain it. You win the fight. That's all you really have to do. Now, fortunately, they take down skis, so they're going to have a nice little advantage here. But honestly, just pushing off Uber here, use the respawn advantage, take down that teleporter, that level three teleporter that Scratchy hasn't really focused, is allowing his allowing Blossy to constantly get players up to the front line non-stop. As you can see, this conch coming out here for Velocity. It's going to be the soldier jumping in onto Badonski, popping him up into air, it gets his life trade away. You can see that he's down for 15 seconds. Compared, to, well, I guess Yams is down for 10, but Carl down for 19. So they're getting a couple picks. We'll see if they're able to work off this, but really they're trying to work off Badonski, but now Nursey gets forced off. Shinmu doing a great job. Badonski in alone, but Velocity's already backing up here wisely, so using their uber advantage, keeping themselves alive, and probably going to try to get set up on the second point. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it was a sloppy fight, but when they won, uh, nonetheless, the good news for Velocity is that they did really do a good job uh, backing out. Skis is going to be at 100% Uber. Jumping right now was Patty, but it wasn't going to find anything. Got denied. So they could force Viper out here. Very aggressive, our ascent. The cart soon to follow. So they're looking good to maybe take this point as Marmalu gets taken out. And then really, we're just watching to see what a sense game plan is. Will they wait for the Uber? But Patty jumps in for a bomb, pops skis up in the air, 24 health. He's gonna pop off the Uber, chasing forward, and Shamu takes one out. Patty goes down as well. Uh, so a successful defense for now, but Nursey is building her Uber. Vipa is actually in the cart, doing a little, got some engineer v engineer down on the lower level, as Shamu finally does go down. And this is looking actually kind of good for. Ascent, if they can work themselves forward, Yams is getting that card up. There's no level 3 to put a lot of pressure, so it's really up to Jared to do this, but there's actually a teleporter in the upper area, and they're going to run into Carl. Carl turns around the corner, gets onto Nursey, gets the force off. That teleporter does exactly what it needed to do, but a lot of players went down, and so three players currently down as they pick up that second point. The real question is, is are they going to be able to get a defense up onto this third? This is what we talked about, getting, making sure you don't want to lose players. It's about transitions. Now, fortunately, this third point has a very long run up, but it's really what they can do. The medic gets popped up into the air, skis down to 30 HP, and Badonski finishes them off using a nice sticky, and that should be able to open it up here for Ascent, but Shamu is getting aggressive for his team. Wow, that was, uh, that was an expert meta kill. I, that was... It's like an alley-oop, pretty much. and Yeah, Ascent doing what they do best right there. So we'll uh, see what they choose to do. Andrew gets, uh, takes out Scratchy. That cart is uh, pretty far down the, the path. So this is the confusion for third. What do you do? Do you try to push off of Uber? Oh, wait, but the cart's not close enough. Okay, let's focus the cart. But while you're doing that, you lose your Uber advantage. And it's always interesting to see how teams uh, are choose to to fight this especially a set who as we mentioned are not as comfortable on a map like this jared's gonna go down though as well as marmalu so with 100 percent uber and they know skis was down that uber should be coming in they choose to use it and actually i don't think they, <laughs> they just oh what a beautiful air shot coming out of patty right there pushing them up and there you go only one player left alive that was an amazing job out of his ascent coming up on that far hand side going through that sneaky house and now Marmalu is going to go for a play onto Nursey. He's popping the Nursey way up in the air, but not able to land that air shot as it ultimately gets taken out. 
So nice job there out of the team, taking them down. As they come down with this point, 5 minutes and 24 seconds, and Ascent is putting up a great time after getting stuffed in that first point. Yeah, I, this taking third this quickly for anyone unaware is very, very good. And it's a good sign for them as well. If they can continue this into last, they're not going to have too shabby of a time. Andrew's going to take down Badonski though, which is a good pick. Uh, but Velocity do seem to have the the beginnings of a strong defense, although they're not going to fight much for tiles. Carl's up there and, and charging forward with skis, but I have to expect that they'll back out at the slightest hint of pressure because you don't want your medic to get caught in there. Um, well, that teleporter's going to help, though. And Nurse's at 97%. They can push straight in here onto skis if they get a good angle. And they're going to do just that as Ubercharge is coming out. They're getting disconnected. Jared gets disconnected from the medic. Skis is going to drop off to the other side, but Carl's still in the upper area. The level 3 Sentry Gun is up, but Viper did go down. Actually, three players down currently for Velocity. As Mela's going to get out of the car. Marmalou, though, doing a great job on the backside. Takes down two. Mela is starting to push up this car, but should start to be contested as Space Ghost is trying to get forward. Mela still working it up, uncontested. Marmalou from behind is getting pushed into the pit. Nice job there, but this is a reset now for Velocity as they do have the advantage, but they do- Oh, they just dropped Carl! And I want to see- Yeah, with Carl and Jarrett down, I really want to see a couple players from Ascent try to get in and see if they can force out Viper. That level 3 is really causing problems though, as Shamu along with the level 3 are going to take down Yomps. Andrew getting a shot onto Space Ghost, charging forward right now is Mela, but he's going to get taken out and they haven't been able to, uh, to get that force out. Nursey's going to be close to Uber now, though, 90%. So uh, we'll be waiting for her and the rest of Ascent to figure out how they want to push this. Yeah, I mean, this is where, you know, maybe you see some mix-up. I mean, maybe a spy would be good to help deal with that sentry gun or run your soldier onto direct hit to help take that down. I mean, he doesn't have the rescue ranger. He doesn't have a wrangler. That gun will go down, like, instantly to direct hit. As Carl is making a kind of behind-the-scenes play, he's actually behind. Ascent right now. I don't think they realize he's going to come up the backside of the stairs, but he runs into Yomp. He's going to try to take this 1v1 as Yomp gets the better of that, taking down Carl, and now Ascent does control upper, which is what you need to do, and actually Skis popped the Uber. Did you see? I didn't see a force off there. I'm not really sure what that Uber pop was over. I saw he was an upper and dropped down with the Uber. I didn't see exactly what forced him out. It was probably just the pressure before Carl got in behind. But now, uh, Ascent used their Uber. They got pushed back by the level 3. Uh, it looks like Viper's going to save it, pull it out, and now he's got it uh, set up kind of in that uh, awkward corner. And it's looking over the cart, which is going to be good, but it's going to get taken out now by Ascent. Only four players left alive on the Velocity side. Marmalou's going to respawn, but they're doing a good job so far on the cart. Oh <laughs> my god, just saved Mela. Almost had it. Jarrett with the beautiful pipe as Marmalou coming back in here with the medic. The scout coming in as well. Badonski getting popped up as Yom's doing everything he can. Marmalou putting down one more, but he drops into the pit. It's just up to the medic to try to do it, but no, it's going to drop into the pit. And that is a six minute and 45 second time. Do I see that correctly? Oh, eight, 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 eight thirty-seven. Minutes, eight thirty-seven. Very solid for Velocity to hold up them at the end there. 837, I would say, is average to slow. So it is a very solid job out of Velocity there after putting up a 545 through three points to eke out another three minutes there. Uh, not too bad. And honestly, I think that's up to Vipa in his Engineer play. I don't think Engineer did a lot on the third point. I think a, a Spy play might have been better in that circumstance because a Mini Century is really not going to do a lot. But in the final point, that level 3 ascent, you could just see they struggled with it. They didn't know how to deal with it during their pushes. Yeah, and first was definitely, I think, where ascent lost a lot of their time. It took them, I, I, I didn't see exactly, but I want to say probably two and a half minutes at the very least to push it. So you get a better better time pushing first and... You know, you, you could have really put yourself in a position maybe maybe down to a seven minute time or something like that. So we'll have to see what they're going to do on their defense. It's definitely quite a bit of time they're going to have to defend, but they're by no means is this uh, is this a, a one round for velocity just yet. Not at all. This is uh, plenty of chance for Ascent to be able to come back from this. We'll see what kind of defense they can put up as a Scratchy is running level 3, so a little bit of a different strategy compared to Velocity. And you can see Viper is on his main of Spy, so uh, we'll see what he wants to do with this early on. The big thing again is usually taking down the teleport, and that's why you can see Viper is actually going all the way back to spawn 
and he's just going to go for the teleport. He's going to sap it. He's going to shoot it. Because the thing is, is for you to run from spawn to the first point, it's about a 10 second run. So it makes every respawn that you have that much longer. So it's 20 seconds plus the, the way back. And Velocity is just pushing up the cart during that time. They lost a couple players. Uber comes out, but Nursi went down from a body shot of Andrew. And they're not going to get too much with this. I don't think is actually they lost so many players prior to the push. And now they have to be careful. Skis actually might get taken out here. Yom's chasing them back to spawn. And Skis is able to respawn there, keep himself alive. As Nursi is just getting back up right now, but a dry push should take it for Velocity here. Yeah, and they're charging forward. They sense that. I think they probably understand that Ascent aren't going to try to jump back on for this. The gun's going to go down, uh, backing up the rest of Ascent, except for Patty, who's uh, sitting there trying to get something cheeky, but he's going to go down just as well. Um, and now it's it's just a fight for a second. I kind of like the fact that Ascent is trying to build a little forward, and I think with Scratchy on Engineer, that's some of his expertise to bring it in. Jarrett's going to go down to a body shot from Space Ghost, so their their defense for a second looks like it could develop into something great. But now coming in from behind is Vipa gets a stab on the donkey, oh. and then on Nela before flying. Oh, he didn't fall off. He surfed back on. Very impressive chain stab there by Vipa. And that's using the weapon of the Big Earner, which is the weapon that Velocity saved. And he uses the Diamond back to take down. Uh, that's going to be Space Ghost going down to a two shot because he picked up two backstab, gained two crits from the. And then he used the Diamond back to be able to get those kills. And so they take down this second point pretty easily. Six minutes and 27 seconds. And you can see the difference already here is that. Velocity is running a spy on offense rather than an engineer, which is kind of the difference between Ascent and a, a Velocity, and the Ubers get exchanged out here, which often will be actually in the favor of the offense, but Jarek goes down, Carl is very low here, but Donsky goes down as well, so no demo man for either team, and Mela, oh, is just not going to be able to win that 1v1 as Space goes down, and just so many players, bad positions for Ascent, and I, they can't hold this. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to. I mean, there's a level 2, maybe, but Vipa's decloaking on it. Going to get the sap down. Scratchy is going to take him out, but I, it really, Velocity have to have to jump on that opportunity. Going onto the Carter's Patty, he's going to take taken out. Jarrett having trouble staying alive uh, himself. So, Velocity are in a position that they maybe could take this, but now they're just kind of, they're kind of scrambling around trying to, become a combo yet again and that's what's going to happen they've got the cart almost uh, almost to the point they need it and i think they might actually be waiting for their uber yeah nursey is currently has a little bit of advantage vipa misses his stab he had but donsky but just whips it you can see look at marmalou and carl right now look at them they're right in that right hand side house and looks like they're going to be making a play together they surprise here comes marmalou over the top love it such a pushes him all the way back he dies Falling to his death, but Jared's pushing up the cart. They can't let him push it up for free. They need to contest this, but the cart's already pushed up the all the way. Here comes out the overcharge for the offense as Mela pushes them off the cliff. Both of them go down. What an amazing play using that air blast mechanic. But the cart's so incredibly close. They needed to stop it coming up that third point. And Viper is probably just going to decloak and capture it for his team. Oh my God! Invite brain. That's that's Mela. Wow, that that's just very impressive. Pushing him off of the off of the cliff. I mean, that was a, a sure cap, uh, but not anymore. Says Mela. As Carl and Skis goes down yet again. Badonski gonna take him out with a couple of stickies. The cart's moving backwards, and I'm really surprised. Viper didn't get onto the cart, and Shamu's letting it roll back. Oh it's my gonna God! Go down. Unbelievable. Oh, that's a misplay. Huge misplay. They just needed to literally touch that cart keep it up there because it constantly pushes it puts the enemy team when you have that cart right there it doesn't allow them to push forward it doesn't allow them to take ground because they have to constantly be worried specifically when you know there's a spy that it might decloak on it uh so we'll see patty taking forward ground you want that's the big thing for your soldiers you want your soldier right where patty is because he can spam the cart he can spam forward and it kind of puts velocity in an awkward position and what should have been a very easy point for velocity to take now they're down uber and now shamu's gonna go down as well carl's gonna try to make a play Come to this right hand side. Oh no! The, the demo gets sniped, and as well as Carl taking down one more. And Velocity's looking very good right now. Yeah, this is this should be the cap at the moment. Vipe is actually going to be behind right now. I think Scratchy has a feeling he's there, so he must have must have tapped him at some point. 
getting onto the cart right now is Shamu, so they're starting to put it forward as Viper comes in from behind and gets the backstab onto Nursey. There goes the gun, and here's gonna come the cap. Oh, Space Ghost actually hits the headshot onto Shamu. So still no cap. Charging forward is May uh Patty, sorry. Uh he's gonna take down Jarrett, and somehow this cart still isn't capped. Yeah, it looks like they're still gonna try to hold this. Nursey's just coming back up right now. We also did miss uh Ski's going down Viper. Here we go. The D cloak on cart. Patty is not gonna be there. Drop down. Podonski will get the frag, but ultimately for nothing. As there you go. Patty coming in from behind, takes down skis. So a decent a worthwhile thing, because that's gonna give at least the advantage back to Nursey. He's down for 10 seconds, but who cares? By the time the cart is even close to being contested, that's a really good trade to make um, at this point in time. So now the big thing, though, Ascent, with 2 minutes and 27 seconds, they have to be incredibly smart. They have the advantage, but they need to make sure that they don't lose players. You can see Vipa on the spy class. He's trying to work himself in here as Andrew inside of main, trying to find a snipe. Uh, Jarrett went down as Space goes on a 7k right now, going doing absolute work, as Vipa is going to go for a play, but no, just a little bit too early. No distractions, and Mela finds him out. Yeah, Marmalu is going to go down as well. The cart moving forward, Andrew's going to get picked up by Patty. So they're getting the cart in a position that whenever they get this Uber, they just want to take uh, take it off of that. Level 3 for Scratchy is going to be a problem and a, uh, something they're going to need to focus. Vipa's still on the spy. I'm surprised he hasn't switched off at any point on this, pretty sure. So they're going to need to get him in a position to sap that gun as Marmalu goes in for a bomb, doesn't get anything from it. But Ubers are going to be exchanged up the stairs right now. Much better Uber for Ascent. Charging forward is Patty. Might be able to grab one. Does get Jarrett. Uh, but it looks to be the only thing with that Uber. But still, that heavily favors um, Ascent. As Skis goes down to Badonski, yet another thing that's going to favor Ascent in this one. Viper does at least pick up one frag, and that's going to make Nursey completely alone. And now she is pretty much completely alone. It's just the engineer left alive. This is the, the travesty of when you just have too many deaths early on. The spy does get killed. Carl goes down as well. Sentry gun goes out. Here we go. A minute, 30, minute, three seconds left in the clock. Nice snipe out of Andrew taking him down. Yam using the Mad Milk is going to get onto the cart, but it gets easily traded away, and Velocity pulls it out there. After such a solid defense coming out of Ascent, it really shows you. Just those respawns are so long and that final point you really cannot take a bad death because it just adds up so quickly. Yeah, that is that is so crazy. I mean, everything was going in a sense favor. They got the better of the Uber. They took down skis. They took down, uh, I believe, Badonski as well. Yet somehow Vipa comes in, gets a stab or, or maybe two, and then the rest of Ascent just crumbled. Nursey had a pretty great surf uh, out of that, but eventually did get taken out. It's just... The, the reversal of fortune happened in a mere instant there. And quickly looking at these logs here, uh, it is going to be Patty top fragging for his team uh, with 22 frags. Space Ghost actually out sniping Andrew. Nice job, Space Ghost. It's a, a sniper, you know, honestly, I, I would put Andrew above him if you told me beforehand, but right now, and not only did he out snipe him by one frag, but he also out damaged him by about 600 more. So, Space Ghost Coffee doing a great job. Uh, but it really, you can just see this back and forth red, blue, red, blue. Like, this is an incredibly, incredibly tight game we have going on here tonight. Yeah, the overall frags, only a difference of nine between the two, um, if you add them all together. So, really, uh, or sorry, uh, 11. Oh, well, great, great, uh, great quick maths right there. But yeah. So looking looking pretty good uh, game so far. I mean, coming down to the last minute, and it, it really uh, it really comes down just that those that crumble of ascent there. And I, I I have to think coming into this next half, they they look poised to at least bring it even. Uh, definitely by no stretch were they put out in the cold there. So I think ascent they're going to be starting off on defense again, and they should have. They should have a chance to set a pretty solid time for themselves as well. And uh, Velocity, you know, they really need to fix some of the errors they had on their offense. But it looks like we are going live. Yeah, Sen has actually chosen. So the way that it works is that this is uh, the map of Velocity. This is the map that they chose. So they get so for the first round, they get to choose what side they want to start on. So the first and third round, Velocity gets to choose side. Uh, and for the second round, that means that Ascent gets to choose side. So they don't have to choose, start on defense if they don't want to. They can start on offense. It's, you know, ultimately their choice. So we're going to see kind of a repeat of last round. Ascent's going to start on offense. 
they were able to put up some good speed, but we'll see if they can correct their mistakes to put up an even better time. I mean, honestly, you know, you think about, again, they were at, what, 525 through three points. If they just were one minute faster, they would have won that last game, right? Like, it was that close of a game, under 60 seconds. And it's just the little moments that really make the difference, and so we'll see what they can do. Right now, um, any changes on classes, it is going to be... Vipa is going to be playing Pyro, so no Engineer on this first point, which I think is a mistake, because I thought that Teleporter did a lot for them and was one of the reasons that Ascent was so stifled when pushing this first point. Yeah, we'll have to see what's gonna, how that's going to affect them. You're right, the Teleporter helped a lot, and you know, although all the bands on the NG, it's still a level 3 gun. It's something that you have to focus at some point, but Ascent charging up pretty quickly. They didn't go for a sack wave last time, and it looks like they might. Gerardi goes down from Space Ghost. Carl might get picked up. He does, and so does Andrew for the bomb from Patty. Space Ghost going to take down Viper now as well, so you've only got four members up for Velocity looking really good. And the thing is, is all those players have to walk to the front line. I don't mean to harp over this engineer not pick, but just think about this. All of them, like Carl would be at the front line right now, but he's not going to be at the front line as a heavy for another 10 seconds. And Ascent is starting to push in. And here you go, two more respawns. They'd be at the front line right now to try to help this defense up, but they're not doing that because they don't have an engineer. And so here we go. Patty's coming down the backhand side. They're going to put a squeeze on to Velocity and try to stop them from being able to leave. He's popping them back in as the cart is slowly working its way up, and Patty's pretty much alone. No real support by Ascent, but it's enough to scare Velocity back. He trades his life, but they should come down with this first point. Marmaloo's going to trade his life, and I'm not sure if that was the best choice. But Skis went down uh, during that exchange from Space Ghost. Yeah, I mean, good pickup for him. Nursey's going to be not on a huge ad, 25% right now. Um, or, oh, she's not going to be healing right but... Anyway, I guess that, that advantage is going to be gone uh, by the time things actually get even. Andrew's going to be running the danger shield. Remember, it has that change to make sure that there's no fire damage that affects him. And I guess Mela has been enough of a problem that he feels that he needs to run it. As Mela does go down some counter pyro play by Viper, Hill is going to be owned by Velocity at the moment. But pushing forward is Ascent. Patty goes down as well as Yom, so the flank... Uh, flank for Ascent, not in the fight, and I think they're just going to wait around for them to respawn. Yeah, and try to work it. They're up, and they do have a slight advantage here. They want to go in off of it, but they need to go very, very quickly. Skis is playing very far back as well. Yomps, as well as Mela, is going into the car. They're actually going to go into a little, like, 3v1. Nice job. Nice rotation out of Velocity. As actually, they're just going to meet Ascent. Ascent tried to put a lot of people in the car, and they've lost every single one. Great comms out of Velocity. Ascent gave away their hand, and Velocity was able to meet it. Nice job. Yeah, this defense is continuing to get stronger, and that's actually something you need to fear for Ascent. I, at this point, like, if you fail this push, if you flub it, you're maybe looking at another minute, minute and a half uh, in this defense for Velocity. And they're doing this without the Engineer right now, but it looks like they're charging in. They might go for the push. Yams is pushing forward, but he's going to get blasted back so far. Nothing to be found. Jarrett's actually going to go down, which is a big pick as Uber gets used in the side tunnel. But it's going to be a solo on Carl. Nursey now feels the pressure to pop. And Patty's just going to go in for the chase onto Carl uh, down into the tunnel. But the problem is, is there are four players into the tunnel. They need to clean every single one up. Carl is fairly low. And you know what? They're going to do just that. Down goes Shamu. Down goes Carl. Down goes all of them. It's just Skis and Jarrett left alive. Jarrett coming back up on the respawn. The cart's moving up here. And what was a little bit of an odd push out of a centimeter, it was a good push, but Velocity kind of reacted by spreading out underneath. It was a fantastic job out of Velocity, uh, or I'm sorry, out of Ascent being able to clean them up. Jarrett is incredibly low, going down to 3 HP as he's able to keep himself alive, but he traded that. Skis is light, and that's going to give Ascent a nice uber advantage here. Marmalu is trying to make a play onto Nursey, but isn't even able to get any damage onto her, really. And the cart's going to start to move up here. They have a nice advantage, but the biggest problem for Ascent right now is they have to be aware to not push in too early. Let the cart move up here before you go in with the uber charge. Let us get into a good spot. You want it to get to the first hill, and the big thing here is don't overextend. When you see Ascent push in here, the biggest thing is you don't want to see them trying to go too far up. And here we go. Here comes in the uber charge. Oh. Nice job by Viper. Yeah, yeah, that, that bomb from Patty just absolutely denied, and actually more members of Ascent are going to be lost on the Uber than Velocity, which is the exact opposite 
of what you're looking for. Fun fact uh, for your Ubers, Mail is going to go down as well as Scratchy to a headshot from Andrew. So looking really good for Velocity on this counter Uber. And just as you said it too, you really needed a well-coordinated push. The cart in one place and your team in the other. But uh, maybe just an ill-advised pop out of ascent uh, for that one. Just the cart wasn't close enough. Even if they had, had won the fight, I don't think they would have gotten it off of that one. Well, if they won the fight, they would have. I mean, the cart would have been okay. It still would have given it a chance to Velocity to re, be able to re-push back onto it. But the thing is, is that they didn't get it up. Like every hill is a really important milestone on this point because it, you're working against it because you can't sneak it anymore. Marmalu just suicide. He jumped down onto the cart to try to take it. Now Yams goes down. Engineer just got off of it. He's gonna jump back onto it, but Jarrett's down, Marmalu down, so that means no explosive classes for the defense. It's just Shamu onto the cart. Here comes out the Uber charge, but Shamu doing a good job. Takes down the engineer. Finally, this cart will be able to start to work up the first hill. But this is what I'm saying is right now they're working up just the first hill, and this wouldn't be an issue if they just waited their Uber like five more seconds, and they would have been totally fine. They still would have had advantage. Now, Ooh. fortunately, they did take down Jared again. The soldier went down incredibly aggressively. And uh, what'd you see there? Yeah, Nursey got taken out by Carl, just revved her down with that minigun. So um, now with, oh, they already had 100%, but that's gonna just continue to build uh, a, a nice hold for velocity on it. And now we can see Mela, the flex wonder coming out up on Spy. Probably gonna put himself, so Andrew's not running Razorback, he's running the Darwin Zacia. Well, that doesn't protect you against backstabs. And he picks up that one right there. So that's going to allow Ascent. They can get a lot more aggressive in their peaks because they don't have to worry about dying to the sniper. The only thing they really have to worry about is the Devilman spamming them. But even that, you can kind of see coming. Yams is starting to push up this cart, but you can see Velocity already starting to back up. Only three players alive right now as Space Ghost picked up two frags. And this Uber is end up going to use by Velocity. Charging forward Viper actually, with the Uber. Jarrett's down, and so is Carl, so... There really weren't many power classes forward with skis to use that uber. Vipa tries to get what he can, but uh, Andrew's going to get picked up as well. So now we we have kind of an awkward potential hold for Velocity. They have no chance for tiles. It's already owned by Ascent. Charging for this oh, Vipa's space God. goes Spadonsky down. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. He picks up two skis. Skis goes down. Backstab for Mela. A Vorfrag's going in Ascent's favor. What a cluster of a fight happening out there, and it looks to be ultimately Ascent who's going to come out on top. Marmalu does at least get himself using that black box to keep himself alive up in tiles. That's an incredibly hard thing to deal with, but Andrew does win that Sniper v Sniper, taking down Space Ghost. So that's going to be a little bit more uh, room and a little bit more comfort to go with. Mela is still on the Spy class doing this up. Patty jumping in with incredibly low HP. I don't think he got a body shot there before going in, but he got a lot of damage actually onto Viper as well. And you see Ascent wants to work through Mayla, but that's his- Oh no, Mela! With the double step! Huge plays coming out from Mela! Oh man, this man can do it all! You know, invite soldier, plays Pyro for most of the time in RGL, and he gets the double step, including the medic pick earlier. This is looking good for Ascent, but Andrew, Viper, Marmalu have something to say about it. They're gonna take down a few on the Ascent side, and so far so good for the rest of this hold. Carl is gonna respawn along with Skis. So uh, maybe they're going to hold it for now, but they're thirsty. They've got huge Uber ad and Ascent. Uh, they want to cap this. They still, I think, have a chance to beat their time from before, but it might end up being very close. Yeah, the big thing they want to do is you want to take down Marmaluke from Tiles, and they do that. They push him out, but he's still alive. Here comes out the Uber Charge, Paddy dropping down, taking down Carl. Now Nursey's going to just have Viper run straight into him, but he should die to Paddy. Finally does go down with the help of the mini sentry. Marmaluke is still in that upper Tiles position. He's going to eat a lot of damage from that mini sentry as Paddy is jumping back, but a black box soldier is so hard to deal with if, if he's keeping high ground, but he just gave that up. He goes and trades his life. Times two onto the cart. Here comes Jarrett, but it's not going to be enough damage. And 835, I think that's the ex like two seconds slower? Yeah, I think it was 837 before, so... Or two yeah, seconds we... faster. So it's, yeah, yeah, faster, like... yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah, they're, they've got a pretty... Uh a pretty average time for themselves well if they ever if they play upward in the future we'll have to see if they stick around this uh around that yeah very good i mean the fact that they they finished off that push right there it was crucial um i think it was yams was on the cart capping it when it came over so 
Uh, good good uh, heads up play for him to, to make sure that the car ended up going through on that. Otherwise, they could have been in trouble uh, as Velocity had their respawns coming in. And just a reminder for anybody kind of trying to understand the format. So right now we're playing a best of three on upwards. So that means the first team to win two full rounds wins the map. So right now Ascent is, I'm sorry, Ascent is currently down. Velocity is currently up 1-0. So if Velocity beats the time of 8.35, they will win this map and we will go on to Asheville. If Ascent successfully defends it, for longer than 8 minutes and 35 seconds, we will go one more round on this map. So we'll see what Velocity can do. They had a pretty stellar start in the last round. We'll see if they can continue that trend. As you can see, again, uh, Ascent choosing the, to run the Engineer level 3 Sench guns despite not having a lot of the typical weapons. Yeah, I mean, Scratchy just feels so comfortable in the class. i got to imagine he's just like, hey, you know what? I've done it before. I can do it again. So... Uh, they are going to stick with that for now. We'll see if maybe he switches off at some point, but pushing forward already is Velocity. They do not have any chill in them. They want to keep moving forward. Viper is going to be on Spy. He's going to start sapping the Teleporter, but I think uh, Scratchy is going to save it. Mela goes down, and we'll have to see. Oh, Ubers are actually going to get traded out. Pop in the air is Nursey. She's going to reconnect with Patty as Shamu and Viper go down. Backing up is Velocity, so... So far, so good from Ascent, but this is the danger zone. This is where you got to make sure you back out at the slightest hit of danger. And I think this is when they need to do it. They only have four players currently forward. They have a sentry gun up, but that's ultimately going to go down. Yes, Nursey is going to get out. Fortunately, Andrew was not able to find a headshot. Barely, uh, Scratchy actually ate a headshot, went down to just a couple HP. But fortunately, to his overheal, he was able to keep himself alive. A little bit of an advantage to the Ascent side in terms of Uber, but Viper is getting himself into position, and with the Jurati onto Badonski, that's going to force him back as he just eats so much damage, and Ascent is just running with their tail between the legs. Yeah, this is uh, really good for Velocity. I, this is exactly how you draw it up when you uh, when you go to bed at night and you lay down on your pillow and Carl thinks of heavy memes and he thinks up these strategies and it's all going according to his plan. They're going to cap this point up. It's it's going to be a blazing fast time for them. Maybe a minute 45, maybe two actually. The cart's pretty far behind. But the good thing for Ascent is that they're going to have a strong third hold. Scratchy's already building up the gun. Space Ghost is in a position to do some damage. Uh, so maybe this is where they can take their stand, Ascent, that is. And actually, Viper does pick up an early frag onto Space Ghost, so that's going to make it a little bit more comfortable for Velocity to get in here early. But again, uh, you don't want to get in here too early. That was a problem that happened with Ascent. They waited, you know, they went too long. But the nice thing is, is as Shimu puts it, pushes up this cart, he doesn't have to worry about being sniped. He can kind of just do it. Uh, Mela is going to try to contest the cart and might actually win a scout versus spy 1v1 as Velocity pushes in. Mela does just that. Here comes out the uber trade, but the cart is not moving up, uh, fortunately, for Vel Ascent as they did a great job from Mela. As he picks up one more frag, the gun does go down, but there's not a lot of support here for it. Jared gets taken out, had the Jurati on top of him. Now Skis goes down to half HP as Mela gets traded down the cart, but again, they have, they're, they're dying too much at the same time. Mela down for 19 seconds, Patty down for 19 seconds, and like, they can't defend this because they keep trying to make plays. Like, you can't make plays on defense or you can't have everybody try to make a play. It's, it's just too many players going down for a sense. Yeah, and I think Mela should respawn on something else. He's actually, he's still in Spy. I, I, I think personally, I would try to, to switch it up here. But it looks like he's going to be trying to work his way in for a pick. Maybe get a chain stab onto the cart. He's going to try to focus it down. Andrew's going to go down, but Scratchy, Scratchy and Patty down for Ascent. Gets the backstab Mela, that is. So the cart isn't going to be moving forward, but I think his team's probably already lost this point. The rest of them have already backed up. So yeah, you got that pick, but now you're stuck on Spy for, for longer. And I don't think Ascent are really going to need a Spy coming into this last defense. Yeah, I mean, Spy, I think, is... Generally speaking, like it's it's usually like a good seasoning, right? Like it's it's light. It's not the main course, and I mean Mela is going to go for it, but it, it's very hard to be effective, especially when you're not a spy main. Mela obviously is a very accomplished TF2 player, but to play spy is still incredibly hard, despite no matter how many hours you have in it. And you know, ultimately, it's just kind of hurting his team at this point. I think definitely just having more damage would help him out more. But Viper, I mean, he runs spy pretty much full time. But on offense, it's a little bit less of a deal because if you die, your respawn's shorter and your picks matter a lot more because a pick on a medic down for 20 seconds versus a pick on down for 10 seconds, it's 
a really big difference in terms of pushing. So you can see here right now, Velocity is starting to push their way up. Ascent currently holds upper, but oh, Nursey gets forced off there. But once he lands it, he's going to try to chase it. He wants to get the force off on the uh, Velocity. Jared did use it. And now Scratchy is going to have his gun start to be contested by Jared in the upper area as Carl pushes from lower, goes down. And Ascent might be able to hold on here. Viper coming in behind Podolsky did not turn around. And that's going to open up here probably for Velocity not having a demo man to defend. Yeah, he hops on the car, takes down Jared. He's actually chasing below now. Marmalou, uh, oh, Space Ghost ended up getting that frag with a headshot. And Yamps still chasing. He's actually in on the medic with the... Uh... I, I believe Patty was there as well, so he just got the force of nature and did some good damage. So Ski's gonna go down, which is a huge frag. I mean, 60% advantage for Nursey. That gun's going back up for a Scratchy right now. It's only level one, but by the time Velocity want to push back in, I think they're gonna be uh, looking good. Yeah, this is doing all right. Carl, nice little kind of cheeky play came from underneath. Did pick up one frag, taking down Yams. Yams was doing a great job of kind of uh, playing different corners. I think as long as Yams and Patty keeps alive, they're going to have a good chance to defend this for a while. But now, they got to be careful. They can't overextend here. But nice job. They picked up a few frags, but traded off a couple of their own. And, and this is what I'm saying. As, as Space Ghost just died. He's down for another 15 seconds as Jared already is coming back up. Like, I don't mean to harp on this stuff, but it's very, very important in your decisions of how you play this, this game. Carl pushing up alone. Nice job there by Ascent and uh, by Mela as well as Patty taking him down. But here comes in Marmalou. Comes in from the flank. But Mela is going to get a little bit onto him as uh, Scratchy's just trying to get a gun up right now. Yeah, Vipe is doing a really good job harassing him, making sure that his team isn't going to have to deal with that. And then gets a stab onto Scratchy. Yamps is going to go down to a pipe from Jarrett. They're trying to jump in right now is Marmalou, but Ascent are crumbling. They've got an Uber being used, but it's just Nursey and Mela, and that's it as the Uber. Oh, comes they can't back run back. Velocity. They can't yeah. run back to spawn. They needed to run back underneath. They needed to, you know what I'm saying? Like you're a pyro. You gotta go for a close game. Running back to spawn is not gonna get you anything. He could have gone for a play behind, gone for pit. Here comes in. Yamps are gonna jump in. He blows him off with Carl. He's a little bit too big. Doesn't get blown off the car. Two minutes still left on the clock. Nice job there by Velocity. What? But once again, a sin crumbling by just losing too many players too quickly. I know that's like, sounds really dumb statement, but I just feel like it's, uh, uh, you know, they have to be careful in the choices that they make. And we're gonna be moving on to Asheville as Velocity picks this up. Yeah, it seemed, it really does seem to be their Achilles. They they look really good, you know. Uh, their defense on first was all right. Second, uh, second was all right as well. And then third, third I think was their strongest point that they when they started to uh, hold it. Oh no, sorry, second wasn't very good. I'm I'm mixing the rounds up. But yeah, third third was their strongest hold, uh, and they were looking good. They they started to get it there, and then last, I mean, you want to talk about uh, talk about a good hold? It was there. But it, it all just comes crashing down for them uh, in, in seconds. And it was the same thing in the last round. But, I mean, I guess hopefully they can put that behind them um, as they prepare to uh, get into the next map. Yeah, so you move on here. And, I mean, at least Asheville is going to be a little bit more uh, of a chance for them to be able to, to, you know, use more DM, not have to worry about that stuff as much. But uh, we are going to go through another pick ban phase. So, guys, uh, we're going to have a very short downtime here, not not actually from us casters, as we can kind of look through the logs. But that's what's going to be coming up next here is we are going to go through the logs, go through the pick bans, and then we'll start up the second map of the night. Uh, and as you look through the, the logs there, Vox, anything you're seeing... I mean, the fact that Viper came through so big is is important. I mean, he gets 12 frags on Pyro, not a class that you're expecting too much from it in terms of just the raw fragging power, and then adds in the 9 on Spy from the offensive round. So coming in with the, the top frag spot on those two classes, just a really good job from there. The other storyline I'm seeing is Andrew returned back to form. I don't know if Space Ghost cooled off or Andrew just heated up, uh, but the... The stat lines for them starkly different uh, from that first first half. Space Ghost going 11 and 20 and didn't really seem to get his footing um, for um, for that round. So I think that's going to contribute uh, in part to to why Ascent struggled a bit more. But there was more than just that sniper battle uh, that Ascent had trouble with. Yeah, I mean, uh, can let me see if I can pull up the logs here. But yeah, I mean, it's just. Once again, I mean, just like really close game overall. I mean, do you, who do you think when it came down to the flex role, do you think that Ascent 
because they both teams we saw a lot of mixing and matching of classes which is why i love this format i love it because you get to see every class has a viability towards it every class can be played at any given moment but every class isn't necessarily correct at any given moment and and uh how they do it is it's kind of always it's kind of up in the air so i don't know who do you, just between these two teams who do you think had the better flex play it, you know, it's hard to argue against Vipa's results, uh, switching between Pyro and Spy. Uh, that was just really strong for him. So I really, you know, the fact that he comes through with the top frag spot, I think they end up playing it better. Um, you know, they don't didn't do as much switching, but in this case, it actually worked out really well because it's not like he forced himself to play Spy while he was going, let's say, 4-10 and 10 or something like that and not really getting results. He kept on it because he was doing well and uh, the fact that we're exploiting a weakness from Ascent. And, I mean, Mela, I mean, still, he did great when he was on Spy. We saw those chain stabs. He got in on... Uh, uh, got in on skis for that offensive round as well. So, I mean, not to take anything away from him, uh, but I think just Vipa had uh, an overall stronger um, round, you know. We should get started up here with the pick bands right now coming in to this Asheville map. It's going to be Ascent, who is going to be the home team as they chose this map. This is the map they this is the map they need to win. Right now, Velocity Esports, if they win this map, they are on to the Grand Finals going up against Froyotech. If Ascent wins, they're going to put it to a third map of Badwater, which is exactly what happened in the quarterfinals. Is a fantastic match between Bank Gaming and Ascent, and Ascent was able to take it uh, after going to that third map. So can start out seeing here Velocity uh, again going after the Engineer, uh, taking it down that short circuit, and I expect Ascent again to go after the heavy, but. Honestly, Carl still seemed to be a, do a pretty good job. I mean, taking it, it's like you can take away the heavy's weapons, but it, a class still with its default weapons, it's particularly the heavy, is still a very strong class. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the Tomislav is is a great great weapon to use, but the default minigun, it's not like it's not like it's completely useless if you use it. So uh, it is interesting. Oh, well, we'll see if Ascent are just banning the Tomislav and then they're going to switch it up, or if they're just going to continue going, but. We see the Wrangler get banned again by Velocity. I like that ban. I don't see the use for the short circuit ban. I, I know that a, a lot of people dislike playing against the weapon, but it's one of those things that I just don't think it would see uh, as much use from Scratchy as they as they think it would. So uh, either way, it's going to be out. And Natasha, no, it looks like Ascent kind of following the same pattern there. I, I think they, Ascent has just kind of found, found their comfort. But the thing is, is I would look to last game. What did what did they do to annoy you? That's the question you should ask yourself. Is what did this is the great thing about having multiple maps against the same team is you can ask yourself that question. What did Velocity Esports do that was successful? You know they were able. So I think Velocity Esports used the Jurati pretty well. So maybe you ban the Jurati away from uh, from being able to be used. Or I'm trying to think of like what were some of the other weapons? Maybe the Big Earner, right? Viper was doing a really good job with the Big Earner. Take away that spy weapon because they saved it last time. You know, maybe Velocity Esports, maybe this third ban, they go for the gunboats. Take away Patty's ability to be able to to do this. But they're going to have to engineer again, which I I just I don't think is as strong of a play when it comes to Asheville. You know, like I don't think it matters as much. Uh, but you can see Ascent did do it. They did mix it up because we saw Andrew go to the Darwin's Danger Shield last round. And so, and they were doing it because Melo was harassing him so much as a pyro that the Darwin's Danger Shield actually came into play. That's what I love also about this, you know, when it comes to this format, is you see not just class switching, but you see item switching because of the class switching. Because you can see a pyro in this, then you see snipers have to react to that potentially because a sniper can get harassed really easily by a pyro at long range. Yeah, and then gunboat's getting saved by Ascent. But you're right, you know... I think, you know, you don't need to bother with a rescue ranger ban. Yeah, a level three and the and the shutters of Asheville can be annoying, but you can deal with it. You know, Jurati actually saved uh, by Velocity. The, the picks are coming quicker than I can talk about them as Diamondback gets banned. And I mean, that's another point. They they got they got hurt by the Diamondback last time by Viper. So now they're going to take that weapon out of his hand. So I guess they 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 did. They, they kind of baited us a bit. We thought they, they were did. going full heavy. And then... <laughs> And then they switch it up. I still think they didn't need to deal with the the Thomas Love. Natasha, I understand you want to make sure that your scout can roam free uh, as the Dragon Fury goes away as well. But I, one other thing I want to mention is Asheville is such a great flank map. I'm surprised that we're not seeing any uh, changes to scouts. You know, maybe maybe you want to make sure that Yams or Shamu isn't going to have all the 
the the run of the the mill in terms of the weapons they can choose. Yeah, I mean, we saw Yams running a lot of Mad Milk. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that. I think Big Earner is going to be this 11th ban here, um, given that we saw Vipa doing a lot of work with that. I, I'm trying to think of like what else they would ban. But as you said, like the scouts could be... The thing is, I think it's also one of these things where it's like, if you if you think your scout's the best scout, sometimes it's better just to not ban anything you know that you think could potentially hurt you. Um, and, and that's one of the ideas as well. So it looks like they're going to go Fist of Steel. They did not want to take down... I mean, I, I don't think that's going to hurt Carl that much because I don't think he would run Fist of Steel on this map. So I think that definitely could have been something better. And the Crits Creek going down again. Um, so nice job there. Velocity Esports taking on the Crits Creek because, I mean, that's something Nursey does like to run, does like to mix up her Mediguns. And so it makes it forces, uh, forces you to have to basically run Uber full-time. Yeah, and I, I agree with you on the Fist of Steel. It Like, Carl might run it, but I don't think it's going to get as much use you know it, it makes sense on the payload uh you know you're hiding behind the cart and you can only really take much chip damage and yeah maybe carl switches to it on the point at some you know it, it, on the cap point but i feel like he's probably going to be revved up with his minigun when he's trying to cap and maybe he switches to the fist of steel during a desperation time so i i think the winners of this ban are or velocity yeah they focus down engineer a little bit more than i think necessary but uh making sure that they saved the jurati they got rid of the crits krieg they did get rid of the wrangler um you know i think that they their strategy might work out in their favor you know i'm gonna i'm gonna split this between the two i think i think ascent actually kind of had a good adjustment period here and just to kind of explain everybody how dare uh, you i know i know just real quick here I, I we didn't go ahead of time but the way that this works is that there's no default whitelist when it comes to pick ban pro lander uh, at least when it comes to the high level games what they do is they go through a pick ban process before each match so the only thing that's default banned uh, is going to be the Machina, and that's due to the high percentage of ban rate that it had in the first season. And then after that, everything's decided by the team. So this is why we get to have that conversation about this. But I think I sent, yeah, the Fist of Steel, you know, maybe the ordering's a little bit bad, but ultimately I think they did a good job. Also, they picked some the stuff that, that you know, Velocity was adjusting them with. Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I feel you there. I mean, it on, on a map like this, we'll, we'll have to see what what happens i mean the jurati being saved is great i i really both both snipers are gonna run it and i'm so excited to see what plays come out with the uh with jurati i mean it's not a crits <laughs> creek but it sure as hell feels like one when you get a nice uh nice explosion on the point and then you get to call out to your team like oh the entire combo's jurati dive in uh yeah those are I, remnants I... of another day for me yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like this conversation is going probably somewhere where it shouldn't. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Word <laughs> choice. Word choice. Uh, but no, I mean, <laughs> I, I think we're going to we're gonna definitely see some golden points. And it'll be interesting. And that's the thing, though, is that Jordy does. It creates a lot of action very quickly. We saw it in the last game where, you know, Badonsky was trying to hold forward. He had Jurati put on him. And then all of a sudden, he just got obliterated within seconds, you know? And it, it's one of these things where it's like, okay, but if you don't want to, then ban that. If you don't want to see that happen to you, uh, you know, then take that away from the enemy team. So, you know, the other thing that was kind of interesting is we saw Shamu, he was doing a lot of switching on Scout when it came to his weapons. We saw him with the shorts, uh, the, the, was it the, what's the, the little one? I can't, the shortstop. I don't right. even know the names because they're so rarely used. <laughs> and, and then he was using, I think, the Fan of War a little bit, like or uh, the Fan. Force yeah? of Nature. Force of Nature, yeah. And like, I, I, he's actually kind of being effective with them. And honestly, in some ways, it's kind of like, also, I always think when you do that, it's kind of like a little bit of an insult. You know, it's kind of like, hey, guess what? You know, screw you. I can still do good regardless of the weapon I I use. And right. uh, I mean, really, he's looking, he's been great. I mean, who are the kind of standout players so far you've seen today? who kind of have been the difference makers uh, from the first round. Yeah, I mean, the fact, it, it, ignoring his, his top frag, Vipa, the, just the way he played the flex role was really great. Even if he hadn't come through with a top frag, I think I would still mention it. Um, I Although Space Ghost kind of kind of petered off in that second half, I think that he clearly is one of the driving forces behind a sense success. So I really, I really want to see him step up. This is a map that a lot of snipers I know don't like just because 
uh, it's it's difficult to get into a position, even though it's a cough map, uh, where you can do a lot of damage without just getting eaten by the flank. But I really want to see uh, Space Ghost again come back to his form from that first half, and uh, he was he was definitely the MVP for me there, and uh, hopefully he can return uh, to be the same. And they are readied up in real time, so 90 seconds from now we will be going live with this potentially final round. Velocity Esports currently sitting up 1-0. If they win this map, they will win the best of three. Ascent currently on the back of their heels. They need to win this round, this best of, best of five really here. So this is going to be a best of five rounds on this map. So the first team to win three rounds on Asheville will win the map. So if Ascent does that, they'll put us into overtime. We will go to the third map of bad water so we'll see what they want to do here is uh that i think that was a scent ready enough but uh yeah i mean overall just really good play i think the kind of curious thing is what kind of off classing we will see what kind of flex plays we'll see i think viper is going to be playing a lot more pyro than spy and i assume mela is going to be doing the same i don't think we'll be seeing as much you know spy as we saw before but the real question is is you know is scratchy going to stay engineer I don't know. I think heavy might be better uh, on this map in particular, particularly for ascent because they don't really run a heavy. Because um, usually you kind of like have your kind of two possible flex roles, and you know I think scratchy maybe switching to heavy might help out his team a little bit more. But I guess we'll find out as we get readied up here. Yeah, and we'll see what happens on this mid. I'm gonna take a look at Jarrett. We'll see. Let's see what he's up to uh, coming out here against Badonski. So uh, he's going to get his first, he's actually not going to go directly to the point, going to get healed up to that 175, make sure he's on the full, uh, that full point for the, uh, for the mid, sorry, Andrew's going to get taken down right away, which is great, famine forward is Jared, to see if he can, uh, can deny them, but Skis is going to go down already, the jumps and that, the flank coming into play on Asheville already. Yeah, nice job out of Ascent, they're just, I mean, they just walked on the point, they said, deal with me. And that's exactly, I mean, they just, they basically just almost wiped the enemy team. Jared and Shamu are the only ones left alive. The rest of them are just respawns as they're coming down with the point. Jared's going to go down to half HP. Badonski getting reconnected back up with Nursi and really solid job out of Ascent here early on. As a Ner look at Patty right now. He, he's in a really kind of cute spot, ready to make a bomb play in, be able to do something. He tries to jump in onto Andrew, but Andrew's already rotating. That's what you want to see out of your sniper. Take a shot, move around. Constantly adjusting. Don't let the enemy team know where you are. And here comes the Uber charge. It was to save Patty, I believe, but uh, I don't know. It might have been saving Ascent there, as it was a terrible Uber. Yeah, I mean, the good news, they're not too far back. I'm 30, 40% on the Uber, but already pressuring the point right now is Velocity. Space goes, Patty, Scratchy, or down. Uh, this is where that Uber would have really come in handy. Badonski's gonna answer back with one frag onto Carl, but I think this point is gone in the favor of Velocity. So, Ascent, Ascent, yeah, as you mentioned, that Uber wasn't great, and they end up losing the point off of it. Now they're gonna be staring at a disadvantage as well, so they're gonna have to let Velocity hang on to this for a little bit before they decide how they want to push in. Looks like Mela has switched up to the Spy class off of Pyro. And here comes in Shamu. It's actually behind the enemy team. He's going to get taken out there. That's two frags already down on Velocity. As Patty is going to ultimately die there, uh, burning up. But Mela with a 3k backstabs <laughs> unexpected. And that is why you want to mix up your Spy play. Because holy crap, that was insane. Oh man, yeah, I think Mela, Mela heard me saying that Vipo was the flex player of the game less. He's like, alright, you know what, uh, hold my big earner, let me show you something. Uh, so yeah, I mean, huge play from him there, they come down with the point, 100% even Ubers for either team. Oh, Badonski! Oh, oh my god! Yeah, uh, we call that a trap, and uh, you don't want to walk into those. As they're going to do a suicide wave into the enemy team, but the only thing they find is their own deaths. Maybe they're just trying to copy their teammates that just died. Ascent off to an incredibly strong start here. I mean, a 3k trap taking down the enemy medic. Absolutely insane. Andrew's probably going to get taken out here. Yes, he does, and that's going to give Space Ghost that sniper advantage. As Viper was trying to sap a sentry gun, got taken out. And you can see the class mix-up already happening, so Viper now on Spy. And it looks like maybe Spy, when pushing, is uh, kind of the, the choice. As Ascent is holding on to the point pretty well right now, playing uh, heartily around Nursi, who's at 
Yeah, and this is this is really good for Ascent. They've got a minute advantage onto the point. Uh, Patty denying Andrew actually takes him down in the shutter as charging forward is Velocity with Carl. Uber's gonna get used out. It's gonna get called early though, so Carl's gonna be the sacrificial lamb. Uh, but nothing else to be found. Very close to Uber now is Skis. So I think they're gonna push this with the Uber ad, make sure that they can clean up. Good job onto the Uber, sorry, well onto Skis to force the Uber. Uh, was Yom, so at least they get it out. It looked like it was gonna be just a free cap for Velocity, but Yom's just make sure uh, that he gets it out of the Velocity crew. Yeah, it was a nice job there by Yams, pushing in and going up on the flank. He went all the way around and came behind Nursi. So she had nowhere to go during that Uber charge. And that just comes down to good coordination, good timing. You know, make sure that you're going to be in position at the right time. And uh, we're going to probably see a lot of flank plays coming out of Yams. Though Dick Mela does get a backstab onto Andrew. So Ascent can play a lot more comfortably right now. Get a lot more aggressive because they don't have to worry about that sniper taking off their heads. Yeah, that's a that's a very good point. As I mean, Velocity is just playing so aggressive as Marmalou does lose his head, um, and Ascent are dry pushing this, which is great. The Ubers are relatively even. Slight add for Velocity, but maybe won't be too much as Andrew goes down and playing in the shutters. Patty as he picks up two uh, with Vipa being the second. Yams is gonna. Had picked up, but now the Uber is going to get traded on a point. Shamu charging forward as Nursi answers back with hers. And wow, just backing up his velocity. They want no part in this one. They know that they're at such a severe disadvantage in those Ubers. And I think they might just give up the cap if uh, if Ascent want to take it, maybe. Yeah, Ascent's just being a little bit wishy washy in what they want to do. And right now, Velocity's just punishing him for it. Here they go across the point. They're just all dancing around each other. Yams is going to pick up one more as Mela on the spy class coming back in here. But this is just a huge misplay coming out of Ascent. I, I really don't know how they didn't capture that point. Uh, if they didn't get on it. I mean, they really had everything in that they needed to be able to capture that point. But somehow, they didn't come down with it. They do at least have half the cap time up. About even Ubers here. So when they tr after the trade, as long as they just get fragged. They'll be able to walk in here, but really just they got to worry about the flank. Look at Yams and Marmaluke currently all the way behind them right now, and they're going to go in for some frags. Yeah, this here comes the Uber's better Uber from Velocity, and good job flashing around his ski is keeping his players alive. Uh, so Nursi is going to go down Marmalu from behind onto the ramp, going to take her out as Mela gets a backstab onto Andrew. Uh, but I don't know if now was the time that you needed to spy, especially in the this last minute of the round. Skis goes down, so does Carl Marmalu. Jarrett, Vipa, it's a full wipe from Velocity as Ascent take the point. Two seconds left, and that's important. That means it's not overtime for Velocity. So they a cap doesn't necessarily mean an instant victory. Yeah, and uh, with 20 seconds left, they only have one push left here that has to be dry. It has to be quick. Viper coming in on the spy class, trying to make a play here early on. And uh, he's going to get across the point. Mini Sentry Gun is inside of that little bush area. It's going to do a lot. Everybody gets Jurati onto a send. Here comes Patty from behind. Yams is getting onto the point. Viper came in, made a play, taking down Space Ghost. And here comes in Patty jumping onto the point. Jarek going down to half HP. Mayla trying to WM1, but he's just going to get pushed back. By the heavy, Carl getting across. Scratchy V is the only one left alive with Nursi, and he gets taken out there. And there you go. Double overtime goes in the favor of Velocity. And honestly, I mean, they might have won that game if they actually captured in the round in which, the, I mean, in that in that push where they lost that capture. They lost like at least 30 seconds on that. And that might have been the difference maker in that first round. Yeah, there was times one on the point well, with five people circling around it, so definitely a huge misplay. They're going to have to work now that they're playing from behind on this map um, and after losing the first one. Carl's going to go down, snipe from Space Ghost, going to open things up, so charging forward onto the point now is Ascent with Fedonsky leading the charge. Viper goes down, Marmalou's behind, so we'll keep an eye on him, maybe see if he picks something up as he does. Uh, he's going to grab one, but Shamu comes in with that backscatter for running the gamut on the uh, the scatter, scatter, different scatter guns, yeah. That was really interesting out of Ascent. Um, so, that, well, not out of Ascent, they put push for a flank, but Velocity, instead of sending their scout and soldier to go for a flank, they actually waited for Patty and Yops to come from behind and was able to kind of make some plays that way. Uh, as Patty gets a headshot, Jericho's down to a backstab. 
And right now, it looks like Velocity is going to be starting to push in. We're just getting across the point for free. They don't have anybody contesting them. Badonski is just going to get to the front lines right now. Mela going in. But he gets the backstab on skis despite Viper being right there. I think he just mistimed his air blast, allowing his medic to go down. And they're going to come down with the point, but they shouldn't be able to hold on to it for too long without having heals. Yeah, this uh, Carl's charging forward takes on Scratchy. He takes Maybe. on Badonski as well. It's a big play by a big man. Well, with the help of Marmalu, who came from the back of Balcony, now Marmalu going straight into Nursey. Nursey, though, gets the Ubersaw onto him. Now has the Ubercharge ready to go. It's going to go onto Yam. He's going to go straight away onto Andrew, and probably as well onto Jared. Actually gets disconnected from the medic, but I guess more importantly, Nursey did keep alive. Mela is in position now. They're trying to make a play. He's going to decloak. He tries to go for skis, takes skis down to 45 HP. As, uh, oh my god, Badonski had a pipe directly onto the medic, but Viper was able to air blast it away. In a scent, might be able to do this. Nope, here comes in Yams, coming in from behind, going in onto the Space Ghost. But this is just constantly distracting Ascent as Nursey gets taken out again. Yams just uh, cannot. I'm sorry, that is Shamu who's just doing a great job constantly on the flank for Velocity. Yeah, this is. Uh... This is a better round from from Velocity so far. It looked like Ascent, besides that one misplay, was was looking pretty good in the first one. But Velocity have have really uh, really want to show that uh, they want to close this out quick and early. Playing from the roof right now was Jared, but he's going to back up as Patty bombs in. Shamu's going to go down from a combination of him and Badonski as Yamp picks one up, picks up two. Jared and Viper are down. As Marmalu dives in, yeah, nice reflect by Mela to save his medic. Yeah, but they're down only about 50 seconds, actually, because they did start off the round by taking the point. Um, and that comes down to Velocity being a little bit passive early on the mid-fights, but they tend not to be too passive once the game actually gets started. They do have a little bit of advantage, but of course, you're not going to be able to work off of 5%. As Andrew does pick up an early frag here, taking down the scout as uh, Shamu, as well as a soldier going in from behind, and here comes out the Uber exchange. Yeah, really, either Uber not focusing each other, they're just charging forward. Now they got to deal. Vipa has a level one in the shutter, and that can always be a problem if they give him time to, to get it uh, healed up. But Ascent really just kind of let, uh, let Velocity have the point. Hala gets headshot immediately, coming out of the shutter by Andrew. And Patty's gonna take it, get taken down from behind Viper. So this looks really good for a set. Oh, sorry, for Velocity. They're capping up onto this point, and time is even. But now, uh, pushing in the favor for Velocity. Yeah, I mean, Scratchy does have a teleport up, but this is just it. So right now, you can see that Velocity is going very heavy inside of the defensive formation. They have a heavy as well as an engineer, and having an engineer on offense, I just, I, I, I'd rather have a spy. You know, like having a teleporter can be useful, but you gotta use it or do something else. And here we go, Yam's going in though with the Uber Charge. Patty going in, they're going in full speed. They're trying to get as many frags as they can. The Scout and Soldier trying to chase down Andrew right now. They're going all the way through. Here comes in Patty with a lens directly on top of the Scout's head. Gets the frag, 45 seconds left, but Scratch is getting pushed back thanks to the level two Sentry Gun. Ascent still in the backfield. The Sentry Gun does go down. The point will go back in the favor of Ascent as they're currently gonna be down about 40 seconds, 50 seconds. This is very doable for them, but uh, they're going to need to get a player, a force off onto skis, or do a really good job of kiting this Uber because they are down over 50%. Yeah, and I think Velocity sense that, and they want to jump right in. So it, it, this looks to be... A, it's going to be a good push from Velocity to make you use the Uber. Actually, Yams takes out Jarrett all, already, so that's a uh, good pick for them there if they want to come back down with the point. But actually jumping in onto the ramp, no, Marmalu grabs Nursey. So there you go, Ascent are gonna crumble in this uh, in this Uber. It looked so good uh, until it didn't. So now Vodonsky goes in, takes down Carl, but I don't think that's gonna be enough. Velocity come back down with the point, and Ascent are gonna be playing from behind yet again with Nursey. Uh, just on the respawn, probably not gonna get her Uber uh, before they have to challenge the point. Well, the great thing is Patty, I'm sorry, that was Marmalu. He died in that suicide wave, but because he died before the point was captured, he was able to get back up. 
very, very quickly. So he's already back up to the front lines, but look at this ascent. Their dry push is so good. Jared going down, Ski's going down below half HP. The soldier's trying to jump in, but the mini sentry completely denying him, but there's the level three. It's gonna try to deny the other team. They do at least have some cap time, some sticky trap going down onto the sentry gun, but the Andrew out with the headshot. The gun's still alive. Patty trying to force it down, but here comes the soldier, blasts him away, but Yamp comes out, takes it taken out by the gun. Nursey goes down, and that level three needs to be taken care of. And there you go, Velocity currently one round away from going into the Grand Finals. Man, Ascent looked really good, and then that level three, I mean, is it's kind of crazy. Velocity are the team that focused down and really wanted to hamper Engineer, and they end up running it, and they wins them around. So we are already on to our next mid-fight. Jared goes down early, which is great. Marmalu is behind yet again, and I think they have a sense of it this time as Patty gets taken out, and so does Yom, so the flank for Ascent is down, including Scratchy, so Velocity might come down with this mid. We'll see what they can do. Shamu straight on to Podonsky. Yeah, he goes down. Nursey completely alone. Viper chasing him down like Jaws. The shark chasing, but not able to get his pad. He's going to take out the taunt, actually. Kills him with a shotgun. And they're going to try to retake on their own bats. Look at Jared has this little sticky trap directly underneath the bat. So we'll see if that's going to work out from Yams does spot it. So, no, that's not going to fool anybody. No one's going to pull Badonski and get a 3k. As Scratchy <laughs> pushing up here with the mini sentry easily gets cleaned up there. Has to be a little bit more passive with the sentry gun. Here comes out the overcharge. Ski's going down to half HP. Yeah, so now both Ubers being used. Carl is on the point, but there's nothing to be found. There's actually no really crosstalk on the Ubers. Space Ghost is going to pick up Carl with the headshot. Then below is going to be Nursey. Jarrett and Skis goes down, Podonsky uh, picking up yet another with Vipa. So this is looking really good for Ascent. They're going to clean one more up, but Andrew is still someone to worry about. He's going to try to pick, get some shots out onto the point. But he is going to back up, wait for his team. So Ascent are going to come down with this point. 46 seconds taken off the clock by Velocity. So they're not a bad first hold. Now so far... That was, a, that was a really nice retake out of Ascent, you know? That was one of the more clean pushes that we've seen out of them, particularly when it comes to the dry pushes, off Uber pushes. But we'll see what they can do. They tend to get too spread out on their defense, but Yams picks up a nice frag, and here comes in the Soldier bombing in onto the Sniper. Nice job out of Ascent there, cleaning them up. I mean, they were Jurati. One more frag, one more piece of damage, they would have gone down. Mela gets taken out by Andrew, who's currently on a 4K. Here comes in Viper on the Pyro class, gets him down incredibly low. But no one's there to clean that up. If the soldier didn't die earlier, FIFA was a little bit more coordinated. That would have been easily a 3 or 4k. They were down incredibly low. And here comes in Patty. He's going to jump in onto the enemy team. But uh, you got to be careful to do that. When Carl's standing right there, he gets cleaned up. And now Skis, this uber charge, uh, questionable, out of a scent. Uh, as Skis is now going to have a 100% advantage on the enemy team. Yeah, I think that would have been better if Skis had committed and dropped down. You really could have caught him with their pants down. But... Now they're going to use Velocity, going to use this Uber onto the ramp. So far, not too much found. I mean, a Scratchy did go down, but uh, most of the numbers for Ascent are retained. So maybe they can go in and dry push this, but Bike was in from behind. Takes down Nursey, takes down Mela, and just goes absolutely nuts. So uh, that's going to be a big play for him there. Velocity comes down with the point and going to be at a pretty good Uber advantage now with Nursey just respawning. Yeah, Nursey did come back up, so only about 30% behind due to the fast response from not controlling the point. And they're up about 20 seconds. I mean, they're not going to capture it, so, you know, we will see Velocity take the lead. But a sense right in this, this whole series has been back and forth despite Velocity coming out on top. This has been a very close match, and it really just comes down to the small moments and Velocity just tending to play them correctly. Space Ghost gets taken down early here. Carl, look at this very cute spot directly underneath of the platform. Takes down one, takes down two. Mela ultimately trades them off, but three players are down before they're even pushing out here. And, I mean, despite that being that's being crappy for the sense of uh, them not being able to get a push off, they're also down Uber, so this is going to allow them to get the response back up. They're going to have 100%. They'll be able to make a play, and here comes in Vipa for a play. Takes down Badonski. He's going to get back out. Actually, he goes down. And now, looks like we're going to see the Uber exchange coming in here. Yeah, pushing forward is Ascent. They want to force the issue. Both Ubers getting used at the moment. Scratchy going to be the only casualty so far as both 
medics are flashing their players. Shambu goes down and charging forward now is Mela to take down Jarrett. So Ascent really need to get on with this point, but Marmal is causing a distraction from behind as Patty uh, kills himself with his own rocket launcher. Poor one out. And Madonski get his head taken off there from Andrew onto the balcony side. He's trying to focus down Carl. They're trying to come down to the point. They should be able to get it for free. But Yams is just playing a little bit too scared. He needs to just stand on that point and get that capture. He's going to focus down Andrew. I guess that's not the worst frag to pick up. He actually picks up one more, and he's going to get out alive. Get a health pack back up, but Carl with the medic behind him up to 450. Just so hard to contest with 20 seconds left on the clock. Velocity just sitting on this point as they're just pushing back out here, but Donsky goes down again. Now Scratchy taking a lot of damage. Here comes Vipa on the flank play. They come down with the point, but they got a lot of people on respawn wave. And here we go, Uber charge out for Velocity. Yeah, the Uber is getting used. And I mean, the point does get capped up by Ascent, which is good for them. Marmalu it's just has been such a good player on this map, uh, doing so much work for, for Velocity. So I, he's still causing a distraction behind, and actually no one from Ascent uh, actually just going to peek it now is Mela. Uh, it was on the point or around it, so they are coming back around to make sure that they defend it. I mean, nine seconds, the time on the clock for Velocity. If they hold that point wow. for that long, this round is over, but tracing forward onto the enemy bats. Carl goes down, so does Jarrett and Shamu. Skis gets picked up as well. Yomps takes him out, and Andrew for good measure uh, with that three rune blade, so... Very, very good push by Ascent there. I don't I don't know what we're going to call that, but that was like a microwave. They just got melted. I don't know what kind of stupid pun I want to make here, but that was beautiful out of Ascent. The damage from Badonski followed up by Yomps with a little bit from Patty. I mean, they absolutely just obliterated Velocity, and now they have 100% Uber. The biggest thing for Nursi is she cannot use this too early. She's been using her Ubers just really kind of willy-nilly. You don't want to lose players. Obviously, you want to make sure that you keep them alive, but you got to make sure you use them with 10 seconds down here. Oh, now Velocity. Actually, Jarrett and Carl just got Jurati. So they're going to have a hard time pushing in here. Here comes out the Uber Charge. Patty jumping in. Just going to clean up the players. And there you go. Vipo's going to run onto the point. He goes down. And that's it. Ascent takes their first round of the match. And they are back in this. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is just the first step on a climb now. They've got to do the reverse sweep on this map. Uh, and get two more rounds in a row if they want to force the issue onto Badwater. So we're going to be looking for more of the same from Ascent as they come out onto this mid. But Donsky going to be charging forward. Sticks down into the shutter. Skis gets picked up. Space Ghost with a headshot to take them down. And so does Jarrett. So uh, Velocity might be in uh, suicide mode to see if they can maybe get Nursey. Otherwise, they're just backing up. The Ascent. I mean, the only problem is that I think every round that Ascent has won the midpoint, they've also lost that round. So let's see if they can change their their tide, change their change their fortune as they're sitting on this point. They keep peeking Andrew. They know where he is. He's up on that balcony side, and both snipers are running Jurati, and uh, it's been so effective for each team at different times. And the, particularly if you're holding, you know they know where you are. Look at where everybody is. For instance, you know where everybody is. If you can get a Jurati, you can get three, four people off that. You can see Velocity. They're pushing in from balcony. Actually, Jared's completely alone. He gets picked up there. Has his life traded away. They're going to pick up one more of Andrew. It's, uh, it's going to be Marmalu coming in on the backside. Though they don't pick up Ski, so Ski's going to have a nice advantage. But, I mean, they are going to at least hold on to this point for another 20 seconds at the very least. And give themselves a nice advantage starting out in this fifth, uh, fourth round. Yeah, and it's scary for Ascent because when they haven't had Uber, when they have to deal with Velocity and they have that full Uber charge, they've really struggled. So we'll have to see if it's going to be more of the same from them or if they've learned from those mistakes. Staying alive right now and kiting this Uber would be huge. And actually forcing the Uber early there was Yomps, but now charging forward uh, is going to be Jarrett and the rest of Velocity. They're going to take down a lot of players, including Nursi, Patty, and Badonski, the others for Ascent. Uh, that are casualties, they still, I mean, Velocity are getting onto the point, but Ascent are still doing a good job holding them back, but that's gonna, that's gonna seal the deal as this point gets capped up. A minute 20 taken off by Ascent, though, ain't too bad. Yeah, I would have loved it, just, Mela and Yams were just a little bit miscued in their timing. They were both were attacking the team from different angles. I mean, I don't think either of them would have done anything alone because of Carl there being fully revved up. It's so hard to do anything with a heavy there. Uh, but Nursi was killed by Jarrett, so that's going to be still a nice advantage here to Skis, who took a little bit of damage. Vipa goes down. 
The lot of players ate so much damage from that they're gonna have to wait to get kind of rebuffed up and work themselves out here. Podonski went down, so without that Devil Man, it really makes it hard for the enemy team to push up. Here comes in Patty, but he's completely alone. But he does get the break onto Andrew. And with a two-player advantage, they're going to try to work this up here. But with 100%, here comes out Jarrett, and they're pushing forward. They pick up two frags. Mela doing his best to air blast everybody back, but he's so incredibly low. Nice job there by Badonski standing his ground, pushing everybody else back. But with Nursey going down there, I mean, they had a chance. They're just going to have to go for a dry push here once they get everybody back alive. Yeah, and Patty, who had been doing so much on the first map, um, I you know, I haven't seen the specific numbers, but I really feel like Marmalou has had a bigger impact on this map than Patty. So, you know, we really want to see Patty step up as actually he's just going to find the respawn room. Andrew takes him out with the headshot. Scratchy's going to go down, but Fedonski answers back by taking out Jarrett and Carl. So now this dry push might work out. It looks like it will. Uh, and Ascent are going to come down with the point actually behind is Shamu and Marmalou come in to collapse on Nursey. So she's going to go down and no after for Ascent. That flank for Velocity is just so good. I mean, at least Mela was able to kind of respond in kind and taking down skis at the very tail end there. So at least both medics will basically be even Uber. But currently, Velocity has taken the advantage in terms of time. They're up by about 40 seconds. But honestly, a sense right there. They just they just need to push out. They're going to walk onto the point. Andrew, incredibly aggressive here. He should be taken out by Yams. Uh, I actually, I, I kind of looked, I kind of cheated and looked up the stats here. I think Ascent might be top fragging in this game, but they're still behind. Um, and it kind of shows they just need to be more coordinated in what they're doing. You know, frags don't matter. You have to play together. Uh, you know, each individual frag is important, but it's more important of when you get them and how you die and when you die. And so we'll see what they want to do with this as they are down about 30 seconds. Carl starting to peak from... The gated area, Mela is trying to make a play by himself. He's going to be caught out. He's trying to get an arrow from the medic. It's going down incredibly low. Needs an arrow, but no, it's going to be Viper cleaning up that frag. As it looks like Velocity is content to just wait here, spam a little bit, and just wait for their 100% to come up. And another aggressive Uber being used by Ascent. Every time this happens, Marmalu just jumps in behind as well. So Viper is going to take down Patty, and now they're just sitting at a huge Uber disadvantage. And I feel like those aggressive Ubers can work when you know you have the enemy team in a position where, okay, you know, we, we get our soldier behind, and we're going to make sure that skis can't get out of this fight. Uh, but it just really hasn't worked out for them so far, and they keep going for the same play. But so far, they've held him off at the point, but yeah, not for too much longer. Mela and Badonski are going to go down, so... They, they have advantage, Ascent does, on the point in the form of 20 seconds and counting down, but Velocity looked too good. I mean, I think that's really the difference maker is that Ascent would be winning this game if they just didn't keep wasting their Uber charges. Like, that play that they make wouldn't be terrible if they had a spy behind to be able to make a backstab while the Uber was coming in. If they had a scout behind to be able to make a play from behind or their pyro going up from underneath. They need something to, to coordinate with that Uber charge coming up front because they're just focusing on one person. They get disconnected. But here we go. Carl is pushing forward incredibly aggressively. The Uber charge is going to come out. But Skis is going to return in kind. Shamu trying to push forward. A little bit of a better Uber charge for the rep. They didn't split it too much. As Space Ghost is going to throw the Drati. It's only going to catch Jarrett as that level 1 Sentry Gun back up in the window. We'll see if they're going to be able to take it out. But Jarrett's playing in the window as well. Down goes Scratchy. Down goes Yam. Andrew gets a headshot on his Space Ghost. And there you go. Velocity wins it. GG's are out as they are going to move once again to a rematch against Freyo Tech in the Grand Finals. And I, I, you know, you want to talk about good flex play there. I, Viper did not play Engineer until, I, there's probably a call, there was a threshold, like, okay, when we have one minute left, Viper, go Engineer, and, and let's get that level three going. And every single round, <laughs> Velocity had it, and it, it, it just directly helped their team in. I, I remember two Two of the round victories, probably the third one as well, and my memory's a little hazy. But, I mean, it just goes to show that flex play can, can really go a long way in uh, determining your team's fate. No, it really does. And, I mean, honestly, it just it's well, also the thing that really determines your team fate is your coordination. If you look at your the frags and the damage between the full game, like, this game, like... Velocity won multiple times, like fairly, like they won decently. Sometimes it was a double overtime, but they out damaged, uh, Ascent out damaged Velocity by 5,000 at the very least. It might be a little bit more than that, actually, if I'm looking at these numbers correctly. 
Yeah, but, it looks like about 12,000. Yeah, it looks even more than that. I mean, they, they completely decimated them in terms of damage, but because their Uber Chargers were just so misguided, these Uber Chargers standing on the point trying to go into the balcony area, which would be fine if you could guarantee, if you could kill skis 100% of the time, even 90% of the time, you know, like a high percentage of the time, that's fine. But I don't think they got skis a single time. They never got a force off because they had the advantage when they were doing it. They just needed to come up with a better technique. Maybe if they went shutter and up that way, just anything would have been better what they did. And as you said, the flex play out of Vipa was doing a good job. I mean, that's one of the things I've seen Vipa struggle with in the past is he tends to get too stuck onto one class. And that surprise engineer, it's kind of like a surprise spy. Like when you just kind of get yourself most relaxed, you you know, you know chill about it, you know? And so just really nice job overall um, coming out from uh, Velocity to play, to not necessarily win the DM game, but to win the game because they played better as a team. Yeah, and that's that's always that's always nice to see. I mean, I've I've seen far too many games at TF2 where it's just it's just a brutal beatdown all from all from just having better better players and better fraggers and oh wow okay yeah they wipe they wipe they wipe okay very very nice and fun but it's 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 really good to see when the superior strategy uh, wins out and I mean ascent. You know they did play strong, but just a few too many mistakes here and there. And the the crazy thing is that these are all split second decisions. And of course, it's very easy for us to sit up here in our ivory tower and be like, "Oh, you, you, you idiot! Why would you do something like that?" Ha ha ha! But you know, like these these are decisions made so quickly and uh, by some of the best players in TF2. And it uh, the fact that the velocity noticed the noticed those disadvantages that ascent put themselves into and capitalized on them is goes even further in their favor and showing okay yeah they definitely deserve this victory yeah and just real quick i mean yeah just velocity they, they definitely deserve to win today um if you guys are interested in playing pro lander we're actually hosting live pugs right now rgl.gg slash pugs if you want to give this format a try if you want to see what it's like to play a fast fun and fresh format where you get to be have a little bit of dynamicness and how you play it uh, definitely check it out rgl.gg slash pugs um, but overall just velocity um, I mean I, I easily could have seen this going the way of ascent but they didn't deserve to win because they just never really could get their strategies correct and so I'm always happy when a, a team that has a little bit less DM but a little bit better teamwork ultimately wins out. And, and one of the ways you can kind of see this too is just also their strategy is Patty was playing more pocket with the medic, you know, with a shotgun, whereas Marmalu was playing more roamer, uh, roaming around the map, and he actually killed Space Ghost eight times. So I think that was one of the other things too, that like Andrew got the better of this game, but it also, you know, it's hard to get comfortable when you're constantly dying to one player, when you're constantly like scared about that player coming out and killing you. So just overall, uh, really good job for Velocity. So, guys, if you're interested in updates, uh, jo check out our pug, uh, our, our, our Discord, rgl.gg slash pugs. They'll take you to our Discord. Or come to rgl.gg. We will have live updates. Come back to the site. I believe the Grand Finals will be early this week. Um, I'm going to have to work with both these teams to figure out when it's going to go down. But definitely keep tuned for that. We will be having this uh, very, very soon. So thank you so much for everybody coming out here. Uh, any shouts you want to give Vox Day before we wrap this up? Oh, you know, just a just a big shout out to our boy Nysel. I'm sure that you were about to say something, but I'm gonna steal your thunder uh, for behind the scenes work. And um, I always like to say thanks for the teams for putting on a show. I mean, that was a very good game as well. So it's not a it's not a half hearted thank you. That's a uh, big shout out to them for for the game they just played. And, you know, big shout out to both these teams for uh, a really solid game. Really exciting to watch. Uh, and then, guys, don't forget this weekend uh, on Twitch TV slash Critscats, there is going to be a charity event, uh, Heels for Reels. It's going to be great. There's going to be a Prolander event with uh, several of the top teams from this season. So make sure you check that out, Twitch TV slash uh, Critscast. It's going to be this Saturday and Sunday. Vox Day is going to be a part of it. Nysel is going to be a part of it. And even I am going to be taking part of it, this charity event. And you guys, if you guys want to play Pearl Lander with the pros, if you want to play with the big dogs, you can win a spot. You can bid, I believe. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to be giving away, but it is going to be based on uh, donating money to the charity. And you can play with uh, some other people inside of the Pearl Lander format. So it should be a great time. Thank you, Vox Day. Nysel, as always, thank you again for Velocity. 
as well as Ascent for putting up such a great day. And congratulations to Velocity Horror. He's going to be moving on to the Grand Finals. And that is it. I am Sigafu, and I will see you next time.